Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to Greenshine Farmers. Today we're going to do kind of just a, a catch-up episode. We haven't done one in a while. Part of the reason is we've just been really busy getting things ready for spring. Um, another reason is we're working on some videos. Uh, we're working on a, a video about the irrigation project and, uh, and those are just taking a little bit longer. So I kind of just wanted to shoot today just to get something out there and keep you guys posted because we have been really busy on the farm. All right, here we are in our in one of our high tunnels and as you can see here um, just harvested these two beds the one on the left is a tot soy the one on the right is red mustard and our yields have been awesome uh, yeah I mean just really getting great yields you know we just did our pretty much our first harvest of the year a um, couple weeks ago and off of the red mustard so far we've gotten probably over a hundred pounds um, and off the tot soy we're probably gonna be around 80 or 90 pounds. And so our goal with these beds, they're each about 100 feet long, roughly two and a half feet wide. Our goal is to be getting 100 pounds of greens per bed. Uh, if we do that, even on a small acreage that we have, our numbers work out. So these beds both performed great. Um, you know, up here, we did, uh, we did some pak choy, and you can see, you know, you can see our weeds here are actually lettuce. So I didn't put down this lettuce. This was sowed probably right before the winter. And uh, you know, it's kind of a good thing. I remember when we first started, if you look back on some of our earlier videos, uh, you know, these two beds in particular were just, oh man, I mean the soil was a light brown and we just had weeds coming up everywhere. Uh, so now it's nice that we actually have a nice, you know, we got a nice crumbly dark brown uh, soil structure and our weeds are actually lettuce so for the stuff you know if I just need to harvest a salad before dinner I'll just come out here and basically cut the weeds all right here we are in our second tunnel and we've got we've just got some beautiful stuff happening here got some kale some more head lettuce we actually did this loose leaf blend and uh, we changed up our spacing a little bit um, I'll put the new spacing in the show notes. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I, I did a quick Instagram video on it, but um, but yeah, this seems to be a lot better. It's still very dense, but it's 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 not as dense as as it was before. And so I'm thinking that'll lead to less problems with things like cutworms, which last year for us, especially with the loose leaf lettuce, was a big problem. Okay, here we are in our third tunnel. And uh, right down here, I did a, a mesclun mix. Now, I was just talking about how I changed the, uh, the spacing on the Jang cedar. Um, that works great for lettuce. What I didn't know is actually changing the, um, the sprocket spacings does not work great for things like brassicas, mesclun, arugula, kale. Um, the spacing that I had it at before was actually perfect. I believe it's the same spacing that Curtis Stone uses. And uh, so that's kind of a lesson learned. You can kind of see here, you know, it's not that we got bad germination. Um, it's pretty uniform actually, but the problem is the density. You know, this is just way, way too sparse and uh, our yield would really, really suffer. And so I was basically faced with two options. Um, well, three options, I guess. One is we just leave it as it is and just take a, a lower yield, which is not something we want to do because we only have so many beds. We need to be getting maximum yield out of each bed. Um, so that's not really an option. Option two was to flame weed it and just start over, which, you know, I, I'm really not out that much seed. It's more the time. Um, I was planning on having this bed, and it's, since it's already been a week, I'm going to be missing that bed three or four weeks down the line. So I didn't really want to do that. And since our germination isn't terrible, I decided just to actually scatter down some arugula seed. Arugula grows really fast. And um, that's not normally the way I would do it. But you know, if you just scatter seed on top of the bed, if the birds don't eat it and it gets enough water, it'll grow just fine. So that's kind of our strategy here. Um, and my hope is that as we get some longer days, 
the arugula will actually catch up to the other brassicas in the mix. All right, tunnel four. This is all head lettuce. Um, yeah, we're going big into the head lettuce this year for multiple reasons. The first reason being that it, it grows great in, in our mix. Um, I found that head lettuce just seems to have a really good shelf life, especially things like Salanova. It just, it really has a good shelf life. It has a lot of bounce to it. It doesn't really get bruised or damaged in the washing process. And, uh, and it's just always in demand. And, and the second reason is that we, it gives us versatility. We can sell these as whole heads for two bucks a piece, or we could put them in our mix, do a cut and come again. And so depending on what the demand is like that week, it just gives us more flexibility. It's basically one, one product that we can split into two. And, and the more versatility you have, uh, just you know, the overall better things will be. All right, tunnel five. We've got arugula in this bed over here. I don't know if you can see it just starting to come up. I didn't use, I, I used the, the wrong spacing on this, but this actually looks okay versus the mescaline was a little too sparse. I'll probably just leave this one. We've got head lettuce, head lettuce, and then to finish off this row, we just, um, we just direct seeded some more head lettuce. So that stuff's coming up, and, and my hope is that we have it's really hard to tier your production. I think that's probably the one thing that experienced growers have uh, to their advantage is that they've done it so long, they've kept such good records that they kind of know if I plant this the second week in March, it's going to be ready the third week in April or, or whatever those numbers are, right? Um, we, the way things have kind of worked out is some of this, you know, my fear is that some of all of this will be coming due at the same time, more or less. I think we'll still be able to find a home for it, but, um, you know, tiering the production is still something that I'm really working on. And, and fortunately, um, I, I haven't ever had to compost good crops. I mean, basically, if we have a surplus, I've always found a home for it and uh, hoping that'll continue to be the case. All right, we got some transplants here, some more celery, we've got some yarrow that we'll just be planting out around the property. No need to put that into a bed. And then we've got some calendula, which we'll be planting uh, with the lavender that we just put out over in our herb section. All right, here we are in our sixth and final hoop house, and we have done nothing to this one. This is the last one that we kind of need to get in and work. You know, we've got, our, our plan is to basically make this is going to be our seating table. You know, we've got our trays over here. We'll have our potting mix over here. And then we've kind of got our um, pallets up on these cinder blocks here to keep mice and rabbits or whatever else from eating our seedlings. So I had a little bit of trouble with that last year. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. We're also going to be taking, um, and this is kind of part of the irrigation project, but we're going to be taking tubing. And we're going to run tubing up here with little misters. Um, one problem that we found, and since we do the paper pot uh, transplants, um, the cells are really small. And so, and, and typically potting mix is, is a lot of cocoa or peat, and it tends to dry out really quick on these hot days. And so, you know, we want to be able to go on a camping trip maybe once a month and, and leave for the weekend. But I can't do that if I'm worried about the seedlings. So I'm hoping to automate as many things as possible. And that's why the irrigation project is so crucial for us right now. So we're just gonna basically run line up here, with little misters, and hopefully we can set it on a timer that everything gets adequately watered without getting over watered. All right, so here we are in our pack shed here. And uh, last night I actually just finished this second drying rack. So basically an exact replica of this one, except uh, the top's a little bit higher. And we also switched up the mesh. So I believe this is half inch mesh as opposed to, uh, I believe this is quarter inch. And uh, the, idea, the idea with that is to hopefully make it easier to clean off and have greens fall through um, once we're, we're done with it. And also over here, so we've got our modified washing machine, uh, our new green spinner. So now we can kind of just scoop right from the bubbler into these baskets over here. Pop the basket in there like so and uh, and just start it up. So yeah, we're, we're definitely trying to get all of our infrastructure projects done 
right now uh, before the season really kicks into high gear here. Now we, we've got these beds prepped. They don't look like it, but they were definitely prepped. And we threw a bunch of straw over it and you know, the grass has started to sprout, which isn't, isn't a huge deal. I mean, we'll, we'll flame weed and get rid of that. All this straw in the pathways is going to actually go over here. Now you've got our plot B and this is just kind of desolate. It just needs a lot of work. So we've been actually, when we crop out, instead of taking it to our usual compost pile, we've just been taking it here and throwing it in clumps. And so you can see this stuff is fairly recent, still pretty green. This stuff over here though, you know, it's pretty much broken down. And so we are just trying to add biomass. So I'm just kind of raking these now and then we are going to bring that straw over, start layering up the straw and uh, hopefully sometime within the next month or so we can actually get in here with the BCS and start reshaping these beds because you know we're we're, we're gonna run out of space pretty soon we're, we're trying to plant at least four to five beds a week and once we put in our hemp plants uh, you know ten at least ten of these beds in these tunnels are going to be occupied so um, so we just really need to get this plot up and going so that we can keep our greens production up uh, in pace with the demand. Anyway guys, that about wraps it up. Thank you for watching. I just kind of want to do a quick little rundown on what we've been up to and, and keep everybody keep everybody posted. Another thing I wanted to talk on, so our, our last video um, was biggest mistakes new farms make. And at the end I kind of put out a call to everybody to say, hey, let's let's share our mistakes. You know, share your mistakes down in the comment section. Let's get a discussion going. And it just so happens that that week YouTube decides to uh, do some policy where they disabled all of our comments and I talked to some of our friends who also have channels and uh, you know family channels and the same thing happened to them so I guess it has something to do with um, the fear that people might be making inappropriate comments towards children on channels that feature children something weird like that we've never had a single problem with it so I think it must just be some blanket policy that automatically disabled comments but I'm working on getting that back up and going um, and so hopefully by the time this video posts we have it cleared up and you can leave a comment down below and um, if you wanted to leave a comment on the the biggest mistakes farming video feel free to go back to that and leave a comment because I was really looking forward to hearing from everybody and, and hearing what mistakes uh, other people have made and what we you know common pitfalls to avoid so anyway um, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you all next time if you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it leave us a comment down below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button also visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms thanks for watching see you guys next time